Uh, okay, let's hit up hard numbers. We'll start with the first one, two million. Two million, so uh, Bangladesh needs to create two million new jobs every year just to keep up with the size of its growing labor force. Um, the, the big challenge for the Bangladeshis is that automation, particularly in the textiles industry, is making it very, very difficult to create those jobs. So this is one of those stories where we talk about how automation can have effects on uh, the social uh, and economic fabric in the United States or in Europe, but it also has a huge effect on developing countries that rely on export industries that are increasingly being automated. Right. So this one is a little closer to home. It's 92. 92. 92 percent mm -hmm. of Brazilians uh, say that they are concerned about the inability to tell the difference between fake news and real news on the Internet. This is according to a BBC poll done last fall. That is the highest percentage of any country surveyed. And it's interesting, there was a piece in The Times over the weekend that uh, the Brazilian government is trying to figure out a way to combat fake news ahead of a pivotal presidential election this fall. Whether it's too little too late remains to be seen, but clearly the Brazilians are worried about it. As are the they dealing with more be. fake news than we're dealing with? Like, I, I, mean, I think just fake news in just general. But they're particularly sensitive to it, and I wonder why, because we're clearly not that sensitive. Well, that's, a, that's the point I was going <laughs> to ask you, Alex, is that it seems at least they are self-aware yeah. yeah. that there is a problem, whereas here in the United States, we point fake news left, right, and center, but nobody seems to be aware that for a lot of Americans, the ability to discern what is fake and what is not, and what we agree as consensus is a legitimate news organization and what is not. Yeah. Well, it's, and it's not just, I mean, sometimes people say it's an education problem. It's not just an education problem. You can have all the intellectual tools to discern what is fake and what is real at your disposal. And you can choose not to use them because you prefer to live in an, in an echo chamber. Right. So it's a matter of ability to discern, but also willingness to discern. And that's really, that's the much harder problem to solve, right? Social polarization, political polarization, make that, make that very difficult. I, 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 I think the discussion is, that's a great point. We don't really know because it hasn't been studied that long. It's fairly a recent phenomena, right. whether or not people actually believe these things or whether deep down they know it's not true, but they mm -hmm. just choose to believe them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a George Costanza thing. You know, it's not, it's only a lie. It's not a lie if you believe it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Remember in Seinfeld, sure. George Costanza. Uh, should we do one more? Yeah, I mean, all of these more. are sort of pretty heavy. Like, usually it's like, you know, there's at least one that's how many chocolate chips in a chocolate chip cookie or something to, <laughs> to keep me. people. I have no idea. I eat it too fast. So let's end with 33. Uh, 33. Speaking of pivotal elections. So 33% of Italian voters are undecided at the moment ahead of this pivotal election uh, in two weeks' time. Uh, the outcome of that election will say a lot about Italy's place in Europe and have a kind of, a kind of echo effect on broader questions about European coherence and European stability and European mm -hmm. reforms. Uh, the interesting thing is that, of course, former Prime Minister Silvio, Ber Silvio Berlusconi is back in the mix, and his party actually looks like it, it may emerge as the kingmaker in that election. Right? Really? So, All right. Silvio's back. Interesting. Indeed. Alex Clement, thank you so much. Thanks, Alex. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thanks, guys.